Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today, for the first time ever, I'm going to be trying a resin 3D printer. For the past couple of years, people have been telling me and telling me, you need to try a resin 3D printer because the print quality is so much better than FDM. And also for years, my response has been, I know, but the resins produce toxic gases, which is just not a good idea in a room like this where there is poor ventilation. However, recently somebody introduced me to this. This is an Elegu plant-based resin, which apparently is ultra low odor and it produces barely any pungent fumes. So I'm thinking that this could really be a game changer. Now, I don't want to say something like that without also saying that this is still nasty stuff. So you're not gonna wanna go out and buy this and start drinking it or putting it on your skin or getting it in your eyes or breathing it in unnecessarily. You should still very much treat this as the poison that it is. However, I feel like it should be safe enough for me to use. I've got a respirator to put on if I want to. I've got gloves. Obviously, I'm not going to be touching this with my bare skin. And also, I can use my fans up here to extract the air if things do get nasty. But it seems safe enough for me to at least give it a try. I've also noticed that the 3D printer that I had my eye on has a carbon air filtration system in it, which sounds even safer. So which 3D printer have I gone for? Well, you can probably see it behind me. It is the Elegu Saturn II, which is an 8K resin printer, and it cost me £475.99 because it was on sale. Also back there, I've got an Elegu Mercury Plus, which is a wash and curing station, which is really important, obviously, for getting all of the excess resin off your prints and also curing the resin fully so that it's good and strong. So I don't know what I'm doing. I should say that straight away. This is not a tutorial. This video is purely to show you my first experience of resin 3D printing. The video might be useful so that you can get a sense of what's involved and how to get set up because I am going to be fully unboxing these products on video so that you can see what's involved. But otherwise, this video is very much just me getting started, so please bear that in mind. With that then, let's take a look at the 3D printer. Right, time to see what's in the box then. I'm gonna open it up. All right. So, I thought this was a box of resin, but uh, no it isn't. It's just the plug, power line, whatever you want to call it, so that you can power the thing. Uh, let's see here. Let's take out these side pieces. All right. So, paperwork. This is good. And there's the machine down in the bottom. So, I guess I will pull that out and then we'll have a look at the paperwork. There we go. Well, looks fully assembled, I have to say, which is good news. And I think that's pretty much everything we've got in the box. So I'll move the box to one side and I'm going to leave the printer alone now until I've had a look at the instructions. Now I'm going to look at these instructions in more detail off camera, but let's have a little flick through while the camera's rolling. So we've got some warnings and information on how to get started talks about how to fill the resin vat and getting it leveled for the first time, which is something I will obviously need to do. Okay, so there's a little showdown of the printer and all of its components. Ah, so it looks as though we've got quite a few accessories. It does have the air purifier, which I saw. We've got a USB drive for storing data and prints. It does come with a mask, it does come with gloves. That's great. Well, I've already got those, but still I'll use them. Scraper, that sounds good. Funnel, backup screws, user manual adapter and a toolkit, which I will no doubt find when I start opening up the printer. This is how to level the machine. That's obviously very important and I'll come back and read that more thoroughly in just a second. We've got a test print apparently. So this looks like it walks you through how to start printing with the machine, presumably with a test file that it comes with. Uh, software, this is going to be interesting. I do want to get to grips with the slicing software, which is obviously not going to be Cura or an FDM software. So that's all going to be very different. Frequently asked questions, that looks pretty good. Looks like some troubleshooting there. All right, so that's pretty useful. I'll look at that in some more detail in just a second. What have we got here? We've also got another 
piece of card here, which is, by the looks of it, just a recap on levelling the machine, which is obviously a very important step, okay? And I think that is pretty much it. So I'm going to go back over this on my own, just get to grips with it, and then we'll start unpacking the machine. Right, so there were no special unpacking instructions for this, so I assume it's safe for me to carefully start taking this out of the packaging. So obviously I have looked at a lot of sort of video tutorials and such before starting this, and I would recommend you do the same because there's a lot to learn with resin 3D printing, and there's some important stuff that you don't want to learn the hard way, such as look after that LCD screen which cures the resin, because if you get resin on that or smash it or crack it in any way, it's a very expensive mistake. So yeah, watch as much content as you can, not necessarily just this video, because like I say, I've not been doing this, well, I was going to say I haven't been doing this for long, I haven't been doing this at all so far, so yeah, you want to take advice from people who know a bit more about it than I do. And uh, in a couple of years' time, if I become an expert, <laughs> then yes, please feel free to take tips from me, but not at the moment. I think I've just about liberated the cover then, so let's lift that up. Now we've got the famous toolkit on the top, so we'll have a closer look at that in a second. We've got some foam here protecting the Z-axis. Then we've got the build plate. I have actually purchased a flexible build plate add-on for this. Not sure whether I'm going to install that right away. I might clean this up at a later date and put that on if I feel I need it. I uh, don't really want to be adding my own stuff before I've even tried it, but yeah, that's an option. And then I guess this will reveal the vat and also the LCD screen underneath. So if I loosen up these thumb screws, I don't know if I have to take them out entirely, I can remove the vat. And there is the screen, which is an 8K LCD. I can honestly say that is the highest resolution display of any kind that I have ever owned. And I certainly intend to take good care of that. Anyway, let's have a look at those accessories. So it does seem as though this machine comes with a fair few accessories, which is obviously great to get you started. Let's have a look then. Right, so we've got these gloves. I assume these will be nitrile gloves. I have ordered a big pack of these, but uh, I guess I can use these for now. We've got um, a load of the Allen keys here. The big ones there look like they are for the leveling screws on the build plate, so I'll certainly be using that. Here's the air filtration system, which looks good. There's uh, some separate instructions in there by the looks of things, so I'll figure that one out in just a minute. What have we here? Uh, oh, it looks like we've got some little pliers. Well, not entirely sure what these are going to be for, but uh, well, they're nice to have, so thank you very much. Now we've got a plastic scraper, which is good, I suppose, for the vat, although I've ordered a latex one so that it's even softer, because obviously you don't want to scratch that vat. And then you've got a metal scraper for the build plate, which is obviously a bit more durable, and that'll help you get your models off the build plate. So that's that. What's this? Power supply. Ah, interesting. So it's got an external power supply then. I didn't realise that. So what does it run on? 24 volts, 5 amps, 120 watts. All right, fair enough. External power supply. Then we've got the funnels, I guess. Do these have filters with them as well? Yeah, they certainly do. So there you go. Little fine filters. And that's so that you can put the resin back into the resin bottle and filter out any solidified chunks of resin that obviously would contaminate things. So that's pretty handy. And there's a good lot of these actually. So that'll keep you going for a while, I should imagine. We've got one of those uh, cheap swivelly USB drives, which also has the software on it. I guess you could download all of the software, but it's on here too, if that's what you need. And then we've got a couple of masks as well. I don't know how much these are going to do to sort of stop the resin getting through um, but I have got a respirator so if it does get pungent I'm gonna use that rather than these but I am using a sort of extra safe resin which has low toxicity but still you can't be too safe and uh, I will definitely be protecting myself in that way so with that let's move on and let's see about getting that printer started so I've decided my first job is to test the LCD screen before I start faffing around with levelling and such. So to do that, I've got to get this screen protector off. 
Oh. Ah. Mm. <laughs> and I'm going to need to power it up, and I believe this is the power button. So let's do that. And I'm going to put a piece of paper over the screen. Now, I've seen others do the same thing, and I assume that just reduces the amount of UV that might go into my eyes, which obviously is not that desirable. And to test that the screen's working, I believe I'll go into Tools, Exposure, Set an Exposure Time. I think five seconds should probably do it. And uh, let's go Next, and I think it's going to do it. Yep, yeah, there you go. So the screen's working. I can move on and do the levelling. And now I should be able to put the build plate on like that and tighten the screw on the top. Apparently that's got to be good and tight. Now I don't know how tight these are going to be, but let's try and get them open. There we go. Apparently the order in which you retighten these is important. So I'm going to pop the leveling card underneath the print bed. And then apparently I hit the home button, which will move it back to the zero position. Right, so that's gone down and we've got the leveling card under all parts of the screen. Apparently I can now put some pressure on this and then tighten these two screws with this one going first. So that's fairly straightforward. Apparently when this job's done, there is no more leveling required. I tend to find with the FDM machines, I'm always trying to re-level them to get best results. Hopefully not with this. Hopefully, once this is leveled, then the job's done. So that should really be leveling done, which is good. So I can press up button 10 times, and that should give me good access to the screen area so that I can give this a bit of a test. So here comes the resin tank, which I'm going to carefully place over here, and then I have to screw this down so that it's good and tight. Now I need to install the air purifier. I've already unleashed the carbon from inside here so that uh, that's all good to go. I've just got to get this into a USB port, which is a bit fiddly. There we go, so that should purify the air, hopefully. Okay, so I've got my plant-based resin. Obviously you have to mix this stuff up properly before you start using it. I'm just going to shake the bottle, but first I'm going to undo the lid just to make sure that I release any trapped gas that's in here. Now I'm going to shake that up well, make sure it's well mixed. And then in terms of filling the tank, I'm supposed to only fill it up to about one third, and that's so that when the build plate comes down, I guess, it doesn't cause everything to overflow. So let's do that. And with that, I am going to pop the lid on. and we'll give that test print a try. Right, so USB port is in the side here, and there should be a file I'm looking for called Rook, apparently, and I guess that's it. So let's hit that, hit start. Let's see if this thing works. The build plate is descending. Let's see what happens. Wow. Okay, so that appears to be going well. It seems to be working as expected. I won't know whether things have actually succeeded until it's done a little bit more of the print. So I think I'm gonna leave it to it and let's get on and unbox that wash and curing station because I'm gonna need that pretty soon if everything goes well. Okay, the wash and cure station. Seems like quite an important thing for cleaning off your prints and also curing them. This is quite an expensive piece of kit. It came in at £111.99, but hopefully it should save some time and some mess, which is also important to me. So let's open this up and see what we've got inside. Right, packaging, let's pull that out. And we've, we've got what basically looks like just a small 3D printer. Again, it's got this um, UV blocking cover, which is important so that you don't roast your eyes. And then we've got the instruction manual here for the Mercury Plus 2. So let's have a quick look in here. Again, I'll read over this myself in a little while. So we get the Mercury Plus itself, a cleaning bucket, a cleaning basket. That's going to be what I'm going to use, I expect. A curing turntable, that's so that your model can turn around in front of the UV lights and get fully cured. Got another toolkit, power adapter and cord, and also an operation manual, which is what I'm looking at right now. 
So here are the parts of the machine. Yeah, it's got the anti-UV lid, product overview. So of course, you've got a couple of different modes. You've got the wash mode, which you do first, and then the cure mode, which finishes off the model. Uh, I guess you can pick the time. You've got an on off and or you've got time down as well. So if you want it to be done quicker, you can do. Right, so essentially you submerge your model in the washing liquid. That is gonna be isopropyl alcohol for me. I think that's what is recommended. It says don't put the model directly into the bucket. You wanna use the basket at the very least. Or if it's something large, you can wash the model on the builder's plate, but I don't think I'll be doing that for the stuff I'll be creating. And then you start it off washing. I'm not too sure how long is required. If there are no tips in this instruction booklet for that, I will look it up and get a sense. But that sounds fine. And then of course you go on to the cure mode. So you take out all the washing stuff. You affix the turntable to the base of the machine. Put your model on by the looks of it. And then do the same thing with the time. So you choose how long. Put the UV lid on this time because that's important. And then off it goes. A few minutes I've heard. Yeah, a few minutes that takes. Again, depending on the size of the model. Maintenance. This sounds important. So after a period of use, the bottom rotor, the cleaning bucket may rotate abnormally due to the precipitation, at which point the rotor can be removed for cleaning. OK, that's good. A few troubleshooting tips on the FAQ and that is all. So with that, let's pull out the machine, which interestingly is packed exactly the same as the 3D printer was. Just Something in me really enjoys when companies are consistent like that. Yeah, that's quite pleasing. Right, so there is the machine, surprisingly heavy. Is there anything else in the box? No, there is not. And here it is. Let's take off the wrap and check that everything described is here. Right, so there's the UV lid. Inside here, We've got the cleaning bucket, which is very pleasing, all rubber sealed on the top. Seems like there's more inside there as well. We've got the base of the unit here, which has the turntable. There you go. And also the UV LED lights. Apparently none of this stuff will work unless the top is fitted. So that's pretty good. Let's open up the cleaning bucket then and have a look at what we've got in here. Should be looking for a power adapter and then the various tools. So block, got a basket here, and then we've got the little swishy thing down in the bottom of here, which creates the turbulence. Apparently that's done by magnets because there is no hole in the bottom of this container, which is obviously great. So there's the basket, and inside it looks like we've got the rest of the bits and bobs we need. So there's the turntable couple of allen keys and yeah sure enough we've got the power adapter which this time is a wall mounted one and then you've just got the adapter which plugs into the back so that all sounds great hopefully then i shall have everything i need to wash my prints as soon as they're ready so let's go back to the 3d printer and see how that rook's coming along so the printer's been running now for two hours, and according to the clock on the front, there's still about an hour and a half left to go. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna stop it. It's using up my resin. I can tell already that it has stuck to the build plate, and I think it should have printed enough so that I can get a sense of how well everything is working. So to save a bit of time, yes, I think I am gonna stop it. Let's hit the stop button and um, we'll get that off, get that washed and cured, and then I'm gonna slice one of my own models to give that a try, and hopefully that won't take quite as long, and we'll be able to actually see some results. So there we go, the build plate is lifting out. I am going to let it sit for a time now so that all of the excess resin can drip down so that I'm not wasting too much of it, and then when we come back, I'll get it into the washing and curing station and we'll take a look at the results while the printer gets on with a new model. Right, so I've left it a good while. It's time to, I think, try to rescue the print off the print bed. Now, in terms of the smell, I mean, I can smell it. So it isn't completely odor free. However, the smell is nowhere near as horrific as I've heard it described. So the odor free stuff does seem to be pretty good. Obviously, I'm not wearing a mask or anything at the moment, but I think when I do this in future and I'm not on camera, I probably will continue to wear the respirator and have the extraction system on just so that it is as safe as possible. And for now, I am going to 
use the metal scraper to see how easy it is to remove the models from the print bed. So let's find out. Oops, that's that broken. There we go, that's off as well. So I'm gonna pop both of those into my little curing basket. Obviously, I'm gonna take care to clean up the resin mess in just a second, but for now, let's get this basket in here and let's get these washed. I did look it up and apparently this takes around three minutes. All right, and that creates some turbulence around the models and washes them very thoroughly with IPA. And once that's done, I'm gonna take a look at them, see if there's any resin left on them Obviously, I will do some more washing. Right, there's five seconds left, so hopefully this will be done pretty soon. Let's see what happens when it is. All right, beeps to let you know that it is finished, and then it stops. So, let's take this off. Let us lift up the little basket, and I've figured out that it will actually rest like that, which seems like a pretty strong position for it while it just drips. I push that back there and now let's convert this over to a UV curing station so for that I'm going to need the little turntable and then of course before you do this you're going to want to place this over the top so that of course you don't get lots of UV light leaking out everywhere right so I've allowed my parts to air dry for a little while so most of the IPA has come off those now so let's place those onto the turntable there we go and then pop the top on and now i think i just have to set this to curing mode like that let's give it a few minutes let's give it say three minutes again and let's start it and apparently that's all there is to it yeah they're just very slowly rotating we've got the uv lights turned on and in three minutes they'll be done Right, four seconds left to go, should be done any second now. Let's have a look. There we go, so it stops, beeps again to let you know, and then the UV lights go off, which means it's safe to remove the lid. And now, I've really held off doing this up until now, but let's take a close look at the parts I've created here. Right, so I wonder if I should have left these to dry for a little bit longer, because uh, obviously there's some sort of weird damage around the bottom. I guess that could have happened when I separated it from the build plate, but yeah, I'll let things thoroughly dry before curing next time. Apart from that though, it looks absolutely fantastic. These little steps inside, yeah, they look incredibly fine. And this sort of twisting spiral up the center, that would not have been possible with FDM printing, at least not at this kind of scale. So that fills me with excitement and also hope in terms of what's possible. So now I think what I'm gonna do is load one of my own files onto a USB drive, and we'll see how this machine gets on printing a wagon. Right, let's try it. All right, so I've sliced one of my Era 1 wagon bodies, as that's a small model, but it still has a lot of detail on it, so hopefully that will look pretty good in resin. Let's see how we get on. So let me print the resin Era 1 wagon. And there it goes, it's now printing the first layer, which is exposed, I forget now how long the first layer is exposed for, it's 30 to 60 seconds, something like that. And the estimated time is around three quarters of an hour, which is actually a lot faster than FDM. It takes an hour and a half to do a good quality FDM copy of this model. This is gonna do it in 45 minutes, so it says. Don't know what the quality is gonna be like yet, but we'll find out. Also, if I wanted to do a batch of these, if I wanted to make 10, the time would still be the same. Same number of layers, same time, so 45 minutes. That's interesting. Anyway, and we'll see how it turns out. Right, it looks as though we have a result. It didn't take all that long. Uh, it took a bit longer than predicted, 56 minutes in total, but still, that is faster than I'm used to with an FDM machine. So, we've got something there. It's impossible to tell at the moment what sort of quality this print is. But let's get it off there. Let's get it through the washing and curing process. And then let's take a close look.
Well, there you have it, and hopefully you'll agree that's a pretty successful print. Can you see the rivets on there? Yeah, the rivets are looking really, really nice and fine. Yeah, all of the details come out, no major issues. Little bit of sagging in these unsupported areas, so they need a few more supports just under there, I think. But on the whole, no major complaints with this. That's a really, really good first test. Clearly, this is going to be a massive learning curve, and I'm sure it is going to take me quite some time to figure out all of the nuances and really optimise things so that I'm getting prints at their best. But for a first day, I think it's going pretty well. The machine is working, it's relatively easy to use, and I think the general process is quite straightforward as long as you're quite careful, so that's good news. I think next I need to improve the print quality, I need to make sure that I'm using the optimum settings, that sort of thing. That is going to take some time, so I'll do that off camera. And then hopefully next time you see me working with this thing, I will have even better results and things will be at their best, fingers crossed. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you've got any tips or any thoughts on this video, and thank you very much in advance if you do. If you'd like to try any of the stuff I've tried in this video, I've popped affiliate links in the description for you, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.